Hello, I'm Clay. And I'm Cadian. And we're in Twin Peaks, and you're watching Toasted. Welcome to Amsterdam. Enjoy your tea and coffee. Thank you. Yes, yes. It's good to be here. So, before we start talking music, we're in Amsterdam, and I know you guys are heavy weed smokers. Not you. You are. I see the, the least heavy of the weed smokers in the band, but I get high. Because I was uh, about to say, you guys look pretty fit. I mean, after all the weed and after all the touring. Well, you know, we, we, we find a way. That's not sarcastic. That's no, it is meant. This is a meant compliment. <laughs> <laughs> We're good at appearances. What struck me is a fun thing is that you actually do use social media to uh, not only interact with your fans, but also ask them for stuff. Like, you needed stuff for an amp. You needed, uh, of course, you needed weed when you were in Brussels. Do actually people react to that stuff when you post it? It's we, we usually can get weed, although no one helped us find the weird part we were looking for for our keyboard. Actually, um, yeah, like he like put something online about how he didn't have a coat, and it was like really cold where we were. So this guy came to one of our shows with like two trash bags full of coats, and they didn't fit him. But <laughs> this is the actual coat that you got. It's a free coat, yeah. Yeah, and I took his old coat because I still needed a coat, so his old one fit me. Hey, tell me about this tour, because when did it start? You're, this is like the 50 whatever days of the tour, right? Well, we, we did a, a month in America, which was really great. And then uh, we technically we did have one day off at home in Chicago. And then we flew out here, and we've been having a good tour. Uh, it's all, all the dates have been pretty strong turnouts. Um, we're having a good time. It's sweet to be back in Europe. We love it out here. Hey, the gig in Bristol was something else. I mean, uh, uh, of course, I uh, uh, checked out a, a couple of the gigs that you did, but the whole fucking place in, in Bristol got wrecked. I mean, I saw a, a pool table with the lights came off, people pre apparently standing on it. Yeah, the whole downstairs area, the lights collapsed. That was like where like the bands were hanging out, like the green room backstage area, and we were playing above it. And uh, this guy's tapping me on the shoulder after we finish the song. I turn around, it's like this little guy. He's like, it's brilliant, mate. But you gotta stop right now. It's like the ceiling's falling down. I was like, all right. It's like great, you know. I'm tired. It's, we're done. Yeah. <laughs> there were people actually posting stuff like I was standing in the back, and I found a hard time finding my grip because the floor was bouncing all the time. Imagine what it would be like to stand in the middle. It was crazy because the entire crowd through the back of the venue was dancing. There was pool tables in the very back with people standing on top, jumping on the pool table. So you got this pool table smashing into the ground. And like the speakers were hanging. There's a video our friend had who's on tour with us of him trying to sing in a microphone that's just like swinging back and forth. Yeah, uh, cause the microphones, the stage was so small, the microphone, like my one was just on, on the ground and just raised to the height of the stage. So it's just like, it's just like moving back and forth. Then I saw this picture of you guys in Amsterdam standing in a window, which looked kind of dangerous, but then I don't know who this guy was, one of you guys, because I couldn't see the face, with a massive fucking bruise on his side. Like, Jesus. Yeah, that's, that's our keyboardist, Colin. There's actually a video of us. Uh, so in London, he, uh, he fell from climbing a railing to get into the crowd and hit the stage, and he cracked one of his ribs. There's actually a video of it on our Instagram, uh, which is kind of brutal to watch. It's like, you see it happen and you're like, ooh, you, that, it broke, you know? So yeah, that's, he's a trooper. He's been, he's been walking a little slower. Uh, he's a little stiff, you know? Drinking a little less, I hope. Probably not, right? The first couple days. <laughs> he's certainly moving a little slower. Hey, um, I was surprised to find that you guys, I mean, to me, you guys are still a pretty new band, you know? I mean, you haven't been alone for, like, decades. Already three albums out. Jeez, man, it's like you release a new album every year almost. Yeah, I mean, we've, we've been on tour for years, you know? And uh, it feels like a long time at this point, but, uh, you know, we're still young, I think, is the other part that makes it seem so new. I don't know. Well, I mean, come on, uh, 2012, the first album, Sunken, the 2014, second album, Wild Onion, and 2015, yeah, I mean, the start of uh, Down in Heaven. Yeah, I mean, I think a year is enough time to make a record. You know, like, back in the 60s, people were putting out records, like, two you know, year. two every, or three every, like, two years, you know, yeah. stuff like that. But, I mean, it is not easy to write so many songs which are good. It's not easy because... It is easy. It's fun. That's why, that's why we do it. Yeah, I mean... You're just writing, if you, if you realize you write for yourself, 
you know, all you got to do is make a song that you like yourself. If you like writing, you write a lot. And then we have four guys who write songs. It's like getting 13 songs a year, and that's not a problem. You know, we could put out, if, if, if we could, we would put out more music a year. But, you know, the label games and all that nowadays, it can slow you down. And all the touring that goes around it, too. But, uh, yeah. Do you guys ever uh, thought of... Uh well, filming or recording the live shows you do because I think live the band is probably a completely different ball game, right? Yeah, I mean people have filmed them in the past, <laughs> so. Yeah, but putting out putting them out on vinyl will be something. I mean that's something people in the '60s did as well. Yeah. A live record. Oh, um, yeah, we've thought about it. Maybe we'd put it out for like free, but I don't know. It's so easy to find like a set on YouTube, you know. So it's like it's hard to. Unless you do something really special to have a reason to like sell a live set to somebody, I think, to make it like worth their money. I, I'd gander someday we'll do it, but you know, the focus has been, I think part of it too is like, the live show is important, but I think the reason that I, I wouldn't just put out the live album is because I want people to come and see the show and not just listen to the live set. And I'm more concerned with when I'm trying to get a vinyl out, putting out these songs that we have on the back order, you know, songs are waiting to get out rather than a live version of a song that people have already heard, you know. Are you guys actually working on new material already? Because, I mean, you are prolific, you write a lot of stuff. Maybe not all together right now, but, yeah, we're all, all writing songs, so, you know, there's there's stuff getting written that uh, we'll be tackling probably when we get home in the winter, yeah. I read about uh, Butterfly, the song from uh, from Down in Heaven, that it was written at South by Southwest when uh, one of you guys was in a sickened state. <laughs> that was me, yeah. It was you. Yeah, it was basically like, actually, I feel pretty good today. But yeah, it was, you know, it was like, I forget what it was, you know, like, I don't know, 13 shows, like, in one week or something like that. That's what happened. So then it inspired you to write a great song. No, oh, yeah, yeah. So more, 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 man. Yeah, it was just like there was no like filter on my head, you know, because I was just so tired. So I was like, and it was just like done. <laughs> really cool song. Hey, of course, um, a lot of people will compare your music, and I think with any band, with any other band, and I don't normally I don't really see the point because every band has his own sound, and of course everybody is influenced by everyone. There was though one song um, that really struck me. I wanted you is if the Stones and Lou Reed could record a song, it would be this song, probably. Yeah. <laughs> Damn, that's flattering. I think that's probably his two greatest influences. So, you know, you hit the nail on the head for him there. Because I was listening to that song, and I was like, wow, man, this is like the combination that you would never, ever yeah. hear normally. Lou Jagger. Yeah. Lou Jagger, Mick Reed. Yeah, man. Yes. So this is on purpose. I mean, they are massive influences. I mean, yeah, they're, they're like my favorites. You know, Rolling Stones, Velvet Underground, for sure. Yeah, I think, I think that's the thing with influences. You're never like, oh, I'm going to write a song like this band, but it's just what you listen to, and at the end of the day, that's going to seep in. You know, yeah. not a conscious thing, though. Not a conscious thing. I wouldn't think so. I mean, at least for me, I don't think for you. It's not like I'm like, oh, I'm going to write a song like that song. You know, it's just I listen to that song a lot, and then without knowing it, I wrote a song like it, you know. Hey, you guys are massive Cubs fans, right? Or is it just one of you? No, I think uh, I, I grew up a Sox fan, but I'm happy for the Cubs. But everybody else is <laughs> a massive Cubs fan. I, I grew up like like a mile and a half away from Wrigley Field. So, like, I got the spirit. You know, I don't follow all the games, but it's pretty exciting. You know, the World Series over yet? I mean, did anyone? No, no, they, they won last night, so it goes on. Today. The Cle Cleveland's up three, uh, Cubs got two, so so the Cubs can't lose anymore. They can't lose. They have to win every game. Two more games. They could do it, they could do it man. You think so? I mean, I don't know a lot about baseball, but it's a pretty historic thing, and I think that gives you some drive, you know? Hey, the thing that I liked uh, from your uh, post is uh, there's a lot of um, – uh, shit going down with indigenous people who are getting uh, fought of their lands, I think in North Dakota, right, for some yeah. pipeline. Uh, you guys been posting about this for uh, already a couple of months, so this is a serious issue for you guys, right? Well, yeah, and I'd like to be more on top of it. On tour, it's hard to, like, really, especially once you get to Europe and it's you only got internet when you get a little chance. I'd like to be more on top of it, but, yeah, it's, you know, it's, it's, 
we have a huge problem with police brutality in our country, and that's a separate issue, or would be a separate issue from this issue of native lands and them basically trying to say, no, f fuck you, we're gonna do whatever we want on it. And it's a, a terrible environmental thing on top of that. So it's both an insult to, to the treaties we made with native people to give them that land and their choice what to do with it, and just a fuck you to environmentalists in America. But on top of that, you're seeing police brutality in that situation now. And uh, yeah, it's just a terrible thing that's really represented, uh, represents the, the bad taste of our government and the, the worst things in our country. And I'm, I love my country and there's so many great things, but it's kind of a stark uh, uh, sh showing of, of the bad shit. You know? Another thing that you guys posted is uh, regardless of uh, the Trump uh, and, uh, and Clinton the showdown that's going on, Please keep in mind that there's also a lot of local elections with important issues that you keep uh, that you should keep track of. Well, yeah, I think the thing is with that is especially for younger voters, but older voters too, um, because of the way the media presents it, it's a big thing. Uh, people think that the you know when it's like you you have to use your right to vote, the big thing for everyone is presidential elections. That's what they think. If I do that, I'm exercising my right, and that's true. You should vote there. But people, I think, forget or, or feel unaware of you can change your community and your city if you pay attention to who's representing you and your, as your aldermen and your wards, as your city councilmen. You know, all of that, we get to choose who does that. But, you know, it can be overwhelming. There's so many people you're voting for. But I think it's really important because you don't see change on top of the whole country until you can change your communities. So I just try to remind people that. Because it's, you know, that's all we have is our right to vote. You got to use it. And it's, you know, if we have, we have, most of us liberals have problems with our country and have ideals we want to see our country get to. But if we want to see that happen, we have to, we have to be involved, you know. Are you guys actually uh, positive about the near future? I mean, uh, of course, the whole Trump thing goes down also pretty hard in, the, in Europe. I don't know. Uh, it's certainly not charming thing to see but also I don't know I mean it's not as surprising to me I mean we tour in the south a lot and you know there's certainly a huge part like whether he wins or loses there's a huge part of the country like huge group of people that are just their ideas are so out of whack I don't know it's not it's not so positive to me I, I think I, I this term came to me on this trip I consider myself kind of like a positive cynicist where it's like, you know, almost just basically realism. It's like, you know, we can't ignore that there's a massive group of support for the ideals that Trump brings to the table, this kind of bigoted, very hating, uh, you know, uh, self-absorbed kind of thing for people. But I, I do believe in the power of the people, and I think as we get more and more into the modern age and people have these phones and social media, it's you're finding people are becoming more aware at younger ages and talking about it more than they might have in the past because it's in your face on these phones that you have in your face all day. And I think that's going to influence it mainly in a more liberal way as we begin to spread ideas and have communication. So, you know, I don't think Trump's going to win, but regardless of this election, going forward in the next few decades, I think that the younger generations and millennials are going to be pushing more liberal and open-minded ideas into the American government and hopefully the world governments, you know? Yeah, I certainly hope so. On the other hand, I mean, it is, of course, the first time that any presidential candidate without any television budget, but also mainly through promoting his weird and outstanding or strange ideas through social media to become this fucking popular. Yeah, I mean, it's, dude, he was a fucking TV, TV star. It doesn't, it's not that surprising to me. And it's, you know... Well, I mean, get big gaining so much popularity purely on social media, basically, well, of course. You know, so he didn't pay for any TV time, but he got more airtime than any other candidate, yeah. and that's something that we, we have problems with our media outlets for. You know, someone like Bernie, who also got extremely famous through this social media spreading, but they didn't give him any airtime. Our country's fucked. They're all fucked. Everyone's fucked. But you keep fighting the good fight, you know? That's all you could do. Hey, back to uh, one of your posts that yeah. made me uh, really laugh, actually. Um, you, you guys have been putting Adam Sandler on the guest list for years. Did he actually show up? Oh, oh man. And we're going to take him off pretty soon if he doesn't show up. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, how long can we give him that chance? What does he expect? It's only like in cities, like someone's like, hey, is there anyone on the guest list and it's somewhere we, we don't know anybody? 
It's we put Adam. Too. Yeah, we put Adam on there. I don't know why. Well, it, actually, it <laughs> works because our, our buddy, uh, our engineer, Andrew, he was in London for a London show, coincidentally. And we didn't know he's going to be there until like an hour before the show. And I was like, well, just tell him you're Adam Sandler on the list. So you can use it as like for someone that missed a spot, yeah. you know. So anyone who hears this, if they ever want to go to your show and they call them and they go in on oh, Adam shit, Sandler. I mean, I mean, maybe, but he might not be on there very much longer. Uh, so, you know, don't don't bank on it. Buy a ticket. <laughs> Hey, what holds in your future for you guys? Um, uh, the tour is almost done. Um, what this happened? Tour, this tour is almost done. Uh, we have we have a couple dates in the states in November, and then another tour in December, and then uh, hopefully we we may be back over yeah. here early next year. We'll see. So it's it's kind of we're we're figuring it all out, but I think we'll stay busy on the road for the most part and uh, start working on recording some new shit. Nice. Any festivals this summer in Europe, maybe? <sighs> hopefully, we're talking about it. We really want to come out here and do the festival circuit, and it's been frustrating missing it so far. Uh, so we're trying to work out coming back for that. I think it's important to do. Yeah, we'd like to come to Europe more often, for sure. You know, it's it's expensive for us to get out here, which is the big thing, but... Uh, we need that bread. We need that bread. So if anybody wants to, you know, if there's any rich uh, fans listening that want to help donate to the cause, pay for our plane tickets... Just get us tickets, just, man. Get, that's all we need. Buy the plane tickets. I know that there's some rich guy out here who loves our band. All we're asking for is, you know, just the tickets. And, you Adam know, Sandler. Adam Sandler, dude. <laughs> Help us too out. bad he's not in Europe, though. <laughs> nah, but he can he still buy the he flights. Hates our band, or he's not, he's After he hears this, he'll hate our band. You know, maybe he'll love you guys for it. He's not hearing any of it. Yeah, you're right. He's going to the grave without ever even listening to one of our <laughs> you never songs. Know, man. You never know. Hey, thanks so much for your time, guys. Yeah, pleasure, brother. Yeah.